Hello there, it's Saturday the 12th of August and I've just arrived at the Holiday Inn in Kenilworth for the first ever Zap Live event which is obviously going to feature lots of Commodore 64 and Amiga goodness a celebration of all things Commodore I'm sure so let's go in and check it out Okay then, so here's the entrance to the hotel and there's some cool stuff set up straight away a little mini cocktail arcade machine there very cool retro TV with Pong on kind of scale electric set here's the poster for Zap Live which uh, it's got a chair in front of it. There you go. We're welcome. So let's move over to the left hand side here and this section is all about the Commodore Amiga years. So let's have a walk around here. <coughs> Wow, that's a cool Amiga. Or oh, is that Commodore, I thought say Commodore 64? But Evolution Commodore 64. We're going to see some interesting old hardware in here, but also some interesting new hardware. New hardware hacks for old systems. Look at this. This is a Commodore PC-10 with a green screen playing Arcanoid. Yeah, there's some classic Amigas. There's one playing IK+. Plus. Someone playing Cannon Fodder, Worms. There's a few shops in here as well, Retro Easy and Digital Retro Base selling their wares and Sega Mag selling a load of gaming magazines for new and old or new, old and new old in fact because the old, new old is the retro game. Anyway, I'll carry on. More Amigas here and more Amigas over there as well. I don't know that much about the Amiga to be honest. Um, I only had one in the past by playing it on my, playing on my uncle's one. On. So I don't know too much about the Amiga in all honesty. There's some cool games on there. There's an Amiga CD32. Some people play on it. There's a, one of several retro legends that's here today, uh, which is Jeff Minter, obviously. If you knew that, Jeff Minter, code of all those Llama Soft games on the Commodore 64 and beyond. A screen on this thing here, Robocop, on a very cool retro screen. Uh, we've got some people selling Immortal joysticks which look cool and also more Amigas so yeah basically this is the Amiga section uh, let's move on and see what we can see elsewhere in the show so this is the QA room uh, and currently right now there's a Q&A going on uh, there we see John Hare at the back there uh, in front of all these people so yeah several Q&A's going on with various retro luminaries throughout the day there's a nice bar area over there which I'm not going to go into, but you can see there's some systems set up over there. It's quite an interesting layout for this show. Obviously, they've crammed stuff in all over the place where they can. Uh, we've also got some arcade machines, Millipede, there's a jammer cab there, we've got a virtual pinball playing Star Wars, uh, Asteroids, Star Wars arcade one up, I think that is there, yeah. Uh, a couple of little main cabs, that kind of thing. Uh, Missile Command, unfortunately, out of action at the moment. Uh, so let's move on to well, that. There's a nice uh, Zachariah Scramble being played there as well, uh, but it's got Pac Mania on it and an LCD screen. Random. Sorry. Sorry. I just bumped into somebody. <laughs> it was her. Uh, so I made my way to the back of the hotel now, and this is where the real action is, of course. Commodore Early Years featuring the PET, VIC 20, C64, CDTV, C128, C16. Plus four and more. Well, I thought the CDTV was really more of a later years thing, but never mind. So let's head in here and see what we can see. First, we've got some very nice looking artwork available there. We've got lots and lots of Commodore 64s, both the C64C and the original version. And there's also some C128s. I haven't seen one of those for a long time. Uh, we've got some sales of uh, the stuff from Fusion Retro here. So we've got the Zap magazine and also the Ocean History book and the Zap Annual, things like that, and also mugs, mugs, there they are, you'll find them eventually. Uh, we've also got uh, Craig Turner, who's promoting his new book, the Game Not Over, and also showing off some interesting systems, including the Virtual Boy and the PS2 TV Fortuna. I only know that because I've just read that off a memory card there. And also a Dreamcast, or Dreamcast, and a Super Nintendo Famicom box. Uh, 
uh, in the end there. So some rare systems which are all covered in this book game, not over, that's coming out soon. I believe it's going to be a Kickstarter for that soon or some kind of crowdfunding thing. More Commodore 64s. Now let's get on to some of the retro stuff here, the uh, obscure stuff I should say. So we've got the SX64. Uh, which is a portable but not very portable Commodore 64. What else have we got over here? Uh, we've already seen a CD32, another Commodore 64. Let's move over to this side. You may recall, if you're a long time C64 fan, that you could make music on the C64 with a MIDI keyboard, and there's an example of that. Also, a plus four next to it as well. So, that's a Commodore 116. I don't know what variant of the Commodore 16 that is. Show my ignorance there. Uh, there's also a couple more C16s here. I've never played on a C16, and I'm going to rectify that today. Uh, we've also got some Vic 20s, and at the end there, the original Commodore home computer for PET with its built in monitor. Uh, Retro Computer Museum are here at, with the uh, various things on display related to the Commodore and also selling some games and magazines. I'll have a bit of a route through that later on. And finally moving over to the far end, we've got more Commodore 64s and 16s and 128s and all the other good stuff. Uh, this is something I haven't pointed out yet which is the C64 GS, the console system which came out towards the end of the C64's life. We've got some sellers at the back there, Rainy Day Gaming, let's see if they've got anything interesting in a moment, and also, I'm not sure who this is, this is from Vultures to Vampires, advertising a book, I think that is. The intriguing chronicle of the many individuals, companies and products that made the a subject of multiple attempts to manipulate and exploit Commodore and Amiga's trademarks, patents, logos and IPs. Sounds like an interesting book. Let's have a look at that a little more closely in a moment. So just moving on to the very end of the show. It's not a huge event, but there's a good selection of stuff here. I don't know what this is. It's some variant of the Commodore 64, but I've never seen that before. It's just like Commodore 64 put into a laptop. Weird. Uh, another Commodore 16, and there's another interesting thing over here. I feel like I know what this is, but I can't remember, and it doesn't say on it. Some kind of PC variant for the Commodore. Someone will tell me, let me know in the comments. And finally at the end here, we've got some C64 audio being sold, and also Cytronic software selling the variety of Commodore 64 homebrew games for the Commodore 64, and also there's an Amiga one there. I'm not sure if there's any other Amiga stuff there. Let's have a quick look through some of these. And yeah, I think that about rounds it up. Uh, in nice little show, and I haven't played anything yet, and I've been here for a little while, so I should probably go and play something, and also have a look at the good stuff that's on sale. So, as I mentioned earlier, I've never really played on a Commodore 16, as far as I know, I can't remember ever playing on one. So, I'm going to play this game, which is called Fire Ant, and in typical Witchfinder's Gaming Vault style, I'm going to have a look at the instructions, because here they are, the packaging on this. Awful. It's like uh, Tesco value packaging. Anyway, there's the instructions, so let's have a look at what it says about how to play it, and then I'm going to give it a play. So it says, you are the last remaining soldier of an army of ants to be destroyed by scorpions, your sole objective is to rescue the Queen Ants have been taken hostage. Negotiate the Scorpion Chambers, collecting items which help you on your journey. Need a combination of quick reactions, blah, blah, blah. Is that it? That's it for the instructions. And it's just got the uh, Commodore 64, sorry, Commodore Business Machines logo and... Uh, oh, there's a load of stuff about how to set up and load. Oh, okay, there's more there. I'm going to read that off camera. And I'm going to try and set the camera up and record the screen while I play it. Uh, I, this is something I was not planning to do, but why not? Right, so before I start playing the game, here's a look at the game. There's no title screen or anything like that. I have to say, I'm pretty impressed by the graphics on the Commodore 16. I was not expecting this many colours. I was thinking it might be like four or eight colours, but that looks as good as a C64 game. It looks like a pretty simple maze game. The idea is basically you've got to make your way through the maze and get to the bottom. Uh, through the door which is in the bottom left hand corner and then presumably you'll get to another screen so I'm not going to talk about it while I'm playing it I'm just going to set the camera up, point it at the screen old school style before I used to get video capture and stuff like that and see how it goes, so let's give it a go I'm <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so there was a bit of footage of Fire Ant on the Commodore 16. I'm not sure exactly what was going on. There's things to pick up, and once you pick something up, you can't pick something else up. And then suddenly things just start happening independently and doors open. But uh, I didn't get very far in it. There was something where you combine two items on the second screen and it created a fly. And then there's like a barrier that I couldn't get through and I couldn't work out how to get through it. But it's quite a fun little game, a maze game, nice graphics. No idea what the sound's like because there isn't any. Uh, all I can hear is the audio from another game in the background. But it was fun to give it a go. And now I can at least say that I played a Commodore 16 game. So something I missed earlier on because there are a lot of people around here and it's quietened down a little bit more is this tribute to Archer McLean. Uh, somebody's put an empty pint glass next to that but um, there's a little bit of information about drop down. Yeah, Archer sadly passed away at the end of last year I think it was or possibly earlier this year but here's a, an overview of some of his games so you can see Drop Zone for various systems there, Doom White's Whirlwind Snooker, uh, more versions of Drop Zone, it was released for a lot more systems than I knew of, I've already just learned that. Um, more Drop Zone and World Karate Championship, also known as International Karate, and of course the classic IK Plus, one of the best games on the Commodore 64 for a lot of people. Some slides there, and they've got a bunch of systems set up with some of his games on as well. So you've got uh, Drop Zone on the Atari, and uh, Fix It Felix, which definitely wasn't one of his games on the Commodore 64. Uh, are they, okay, so they're not all his games, there's a, a mixture of stuff, but anyway, uh, certainly Drop Zone uh, was one of his on the Atari 800 there. Plays just as fluid as the 64 version, I'll say that. The chaser has to be the 64 version. It may well be. I've not played the 64 version for a while. Right then, I hope you enjoyed watching that. It's now the day after the show, so the Sunday, and I just want to share a few thoughts about the show in general. I thought it was a great show, I had a great time there. The organisation was great in terms of all the different systems that were set up, lots of interesting stuff to see and do. The layout of the venue was a little bit congested in places, certainly the corridor leading to the main room where the C64 stuff was was quite congested most of the day. 
But overall, I think that Chris Wilkins and Craig Turner and all the people involved with Fusion and Revival did a great job there and I think everyone had a great time. Personally, didn't play hardly any games there. I never do at these shows. What I tend to do is chat to people all day and it was great to chat to a bunch of Commodore 64 enthusiasts about our favourite machines. So I want to give a few shout outs to a few people I met for the first time at the event. Some of those people I've talked to in the past, uh, there was a couple of guests that I had on my budget publisher showdown. Rob Wilson, RWX Designs, and Colin Poole, who was from Let's Talk Le Le Let's Talk Retro, uh, and also wrote the Mastertronic book for the Commodore 64 for Fusion. I met both of them there for the first time in person. It was really great to talk to them. And I also met Sean from Retro Games Revived and Russ Retro Bear for the first time, and we had a good chat about collecting Commodore 64 games as well. So big shout out to them, and also Mrs. Bear, I mustn't forget as well, she was very nice to speak to as well. So great to have met all those people, and also I met some of my good as well who I've known for many years so we had a great time chatting throughout the day having a few drinks and not really playing any games but you can play your games at home can't you you don't need to do that at these events really so just to round things off let's talk about pickups and well I didn't really pick anything up there there weren't too many trade stores I did have a look around but there's not really anything I'm looking for apart from that elusive copy of Chimera for the Silver Range packaging on the Commodore 64, which a copy recently sold for on eBay for £40, which is just ridiculous. But anyway, one thing I did get, having bought the early bird ticket, was this Zap Live goodie bag. So let's have a look what's in that very quickly. So it's got a couple of magazines in. So it's got a, an a, a official program, if you like, a Zap Live special version of Fusion magazine, and also a, a Fusion Dreamcast, this one seems to be. Uh, so another copy of Fusion there. So that'll be cool to have a browse through at some point. Uh, it also got a CD, which is uh, Zap Sid Sizzlers. Uh, for, uh, again, that's an exclusive to the event. And that's got 14 Sid tunes on, I guess they are, or, or covers of Sid tunes. I'm not entirely sure. I'll have a listen to that at some point. And I think, yeah, there's a badge as well. I thought there was a badge. Very small badge. Uh, was this a guy who was in the margins on Zap or something like that, maybe? I'm not sure, little character there. Uh, I'm not going to do anything with that, it's a badge. Uh, so yeah, that was nice to get as a uh, early bird ticket purchase, so a nice little bonus to have. So as I say, not much else there of interest to me in terms of collecting games. There were a couple of things I was tempted by, but nothing I bought in the end. So that about rounds it up for this look at Zap Live. I hope they'll do another one in the future. I think it was a big success, so... As I said, well done to the organisers and I'll be there again if they do one next year. That's all for this video. Thanks very much for watching and see you in another one soon.